In this video, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, I'm going to travel to pretty much Blackpool to buy yet another car. <laughs> right, just doing some packing. We've got the most problematic gimbal in the world. We've got my much better camera mount complete with um, mobile phone adapter. That's been a bit of a breakthrough. Of that hat. Um, we've got cassettes. I'm hoping it's got a cassette player. Um, jump pack and a random assortment of tools um, all going in my overnight bag because oh hello George do you want to come as well um, because um, yeah I, I left my backpack in Telford on the 2CV mission I'm hoping to collect that next week and um, there's no room no room for cats George I'm afraid oh, sod you then so we depart the pallet stack and um, a slightly broken Mazda, which is currently peeing um, power steering fluid everywhere. We look forward to filling this space behind said Mazda with the new car. Uh, I have my bag of stuff. I have my hat. I surely have everything I could possibly need. I can't find the extra good gaffer tape that I used on the Mazda sunroof. I would love to know what I've done with that. But stage one is to um, walk up to the road and um, meet a friend who is going to drive me all the way up near Blackpool which is nice I shall explain more once we're underway and here we are hurtling along the A44 the most dangerous road in Wales but also one of the most scenic maybe those two facts are linked I suspect it's just because people like driving like idiots um, but yeah we're wafting along in luxury brushed aluminium and um, many buttons in a Volvo V70. It's even got this thing that pokes out the dashboard and tells you where to go. It's all mod cons. But we are heading towards Lancashire, several hours to go. Uh, I'm going to be mightily bored, I suspect. But um, yeah, we, we shall see how the day unfolds. Beautiful uh, motorway spot here. The Jawet Javelin, um, a car built in Bradford. Uh, Flat four engine, column gear change, there I was having a lovely picnic. Oh, um, sorry, it's okay, well. off to the Lake District. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. Thank you. Thank you. We're at Charnock Richards Services up in near Preston. I have tea. And our steed for the day is this marvellous Volvo, which I'm not really used to. It's um, smooth and quiet and um, feels well put together. And um, yeah, sounds quite nice, five cylinder diesel. There's the Jowett, enjoying their picnic, wonderful. And uh, we shall enjoy the um, five cylinder noises of a Volvo turbo diesel. Not that you can hear very much of it because it's a modern car and it's suitably muted. But yeah, a cup of teas would be had and now we enjoy further adventures. I'm going to have to get another car with a five-cylinder engine in my life. Here we go then. First glimpse at my new steed. A Rover 820 base model. A fastback with rear spoiler. And um, from photos I've seen, oh yes, we got a bit of... Um, crispy going on around the top but um yeah wow it looks good it looks big there we go we've just um done the paperwork so it's now officially my car it's now officially taxed i still haven't driven it i still haven't even sat in it all i've done so far is put my stuff in the boot um there's some wild breakage going on um, so I can't actually have the parcel shelf up we've got a random bit of trim in here I don't even know where that's from and some empty cans of oil but uh, let's have a nose around so the only area of concern is this that's going to be tricky to sort out properly you can see where the frames rusting as well so I hope that doesn't leak I've had enough of sunroof woes but um, yeah all very pleasant in here oh 
Yeah, it's definitely a, a smell I remember because um, many Rover products in my childhood. And um, yeah, it should be good. Might have to adjust the seat slightly. But you know, we've got electric front windows and the sunroof is a manual windy windy. We've got the ventilation blind closed so we can... Oh yeah, that, that shows even more rust. Might be needing to find another sunroof for this one. And a remote mirror adjustment, because it's that level of poverty. Uh, it's very low spec. Push buttons for the rear wipers. Um, a bit of mould on the dash as well. We'll clean that up when we get back. And uh, yes, it has a cassette player. Um, hopefully that'll work when I put the key in, because I've bought cassettes with me. Very interesting. It's um, remarkably clean. So we've got 105,000 miles on the clock and uh, the engine is the 2 litre O series. Um, the O series being the replacement for the B series engine, has an overhead camshaft, cam belt's probably due to be honest, um, but um, yeah, this is very interesting. Right, we're gonna go for a short drive just so I can do the live reveal video that you've probably already seen, and then um, we can start the journey home. Here we go then, my very first drive in my new car. And fittingly, we're following the chap in his gorgeous um, MG Metro. We're gonna do um, some handover picks uh, at a scenic spot. It's an automatic choke and it's not a great one because this is the base model. It doesn't even have fuel injection. It's the 2 litre O series engine, which was also used in the Montego O series engine, also used in the later Marinas, uh, Sherpa vans. Uh, never made it into the MGB, there was talk of doing that, they never did. But um, yeah, I'm going to blow my seat height a bit, I think. Oh, there we go, a bit lower. Oh, dearie me. These auto chokes are just absolute rubbish. You're kind of better off warming the engine up yourself before you go anywhere. I remember my dad's Montego, which had the 1.6 um, S series engine. Uh, that was also a bit of a pig, especially on damp mornings. But this is only the second Rover 800 I've ever driven. And um, yeah, it's, it's feeling fairly peaceful. feeling um, smooth. Yeah, I'm liking it. Let's see if my stereo works. No, that's a great shame, but I may have a spare um, stereo that will fit this car. I'll have to have a look. Oh, the remote mirror adjustment actually works. That's good. Anything on my coin slot? A single penny. I shall not spend it all at once. So obviously, I wish this was the V6, because um, um, I watched the exploits of Tony Pond, who set a production car speed record, managed to average uh, 100 miles an hour around the Isle of Man TT course in a production car, ostensibly. I think they did some mild suspension and exhaust mods to a Rover 827 Vitesse. That is very much the ultimate, but this, being the two litre poverty spec model is a lot more hub nut. And um, yeah, the sunroof suggests work to do. Um, we should make a fine addition to the fleet, hopefully. We've just gone for a short drive. We are ignoring parking regulations. Yes, stop you pedants, but it's such a lovely spot. We thought we'd stop here. We just had a merry convoy with um, this MG Metro and um, also owned by Ashley, who's just sold me the Rover, and look at the um, how good the two of them look together. I think that's absolutely marvellous. So yeah, this is the ro Rover. It's still got its dealer plates on it. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous dealer plates, as has the Metro. Lovely. And um, yeah, we shall um, have a walk around. It's the Fastback, which was introduced in 1987, I think, a year after the saloon lovely looking car and I've, I've got the rear spoiler and a tow bar i mean this could be a seriously useful car 
I mean, as tow cars go, it's only got 100 brake horsepower, I think, so it's not going to be the most powerful. But it's, um, yeah, certainly one of the best cars um, I've had for a while, I think. I mean, it's not the perfect example. No car of mine ever is, but um, it's, there's some definite bubbling that's going to have to be addressed. But um, I think it's going to be very interesting. You'll notice it's got good old standard wheel trims. But yeah, it's fairly clean condition apart from the rust. I think it's absolutely lovely. So um, we've just taken it for a short drive. The tyres look a little um, low on air perhaps, and perhaps a little aged as well. Uh, oh yes, you can see cracking starting on the sidewall. So um, we won't get too carried away. Quite old tyres. Yeah, they feel rock hard. I can't imagine this car's gonna be fun in the rain. But um, yeah. Oh, we've got Tigars on the back. Um, made in Serbia, I think. Uh, but we were able to tell um, how old if it says Yugoslavia on them, but I can't see anything. Oh, there we go. Made in Yugoslavia. So that, there you go, that, that dates the tires well enough, doesn't it? They are not new. And it looks like it might have already have had a tickle with the welder on this side. But yeah, what a fine looking car. And what a fine looking pair of cars. Right, we need to go and do the live reveal, which will be much of this, um, but without the high definition. But um, everyone wants to know, so I better go and do it. Let's go and get some fuel, because I think she's going to need a drink. The brakes are not great, to be honest. There's a lot of travel in the um, pedal. Um, so might need to go through the brakes, need to do the tyres, need to do the cam belt. Uh, there's a fair bit to do, but um, the good news is this car was free. Um, it was um, all, all set up. Um, Ashley wanted the car to go to a good home. And uh, I know you're thinking, Hubnut, is that a great home? But um, yeah, Mark, who drove me up here, because he happens to be coming up for work, um, he's involved with the Rover 800 Club. Uh, so he very kindly gave me a lift up here absolutely brilliant of him thanks mark and um yeah i mean the, the problem is the car got offered to the rover 800 club but um I, I know what it's like when a club gets offered a car it's it can become a millstone it can become a problem who owns it who looks after it so the thinking is that i will have the car for now and um, try and crack on with some of the improvements it generates content for my channel and uh, then it's going to go into the classic car loan scheme and um, i'll try and give you some more details of those when i have them at the point of recording i don't have any good contact details there isn't a website uh, for instance but um, yeah the classic car loan scheme exists so people can borrow classic cars over a relatively long period of time so up to a year which is time to get a feel for the car learn how to look after the car and um, the scheme's been going for a couple of years now, I think, with some success. Cars varying from um, a Ford Model A to an Austin Maestro. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that is the, the, the plan. After me, it'll go into the classic car loan scheme. So someone will be able to loan this car and um, uh, enjoy it as they will. Um, so I'm looking forward to improving it before that because it needs better brakes, it needs better tyres, it needs to be safe. For the next person to take on so yeah very thankful to ashley for effectively donating the car and um yeah to the rover 800 owners club for their help so far um links will be appearing down below uh, i just need to pay attention at a roundabout by jove is that an audi signaling oh no one signals as well gosh the no north is an amazing place Yeah, it's a nice, reasonably light clutch. It's a far, far more comfortable car than the Mazda. It's not disgracefully slow either for the base model. I mean, I've got a bit of a trim rattle going on over here, but so far so standard Rover. Um, let's go around here, we'll go up here. Just nervously looking at the police car but I have taxed the car in my name so all should be good it has MOT I've had to insure it with day insurance because uh, I foolishly forgot to arrange insurance before coming up here so it's all been a bit of an emergency but um, yeah 
we shall see how it handles the drive home. Uh, I'm going to have to move that angle, uh, I'm afraid, because I need my sat nav. So I need um, I need you to be more reachable. You're no good up there. You're miles away. But um, priority number one: find some petroleum. And uh, with that achieved, we can drive home back to Wales. And I think it's going to be a lovely drive, even without my cassettes. That's a little saddening. Oh. Yeah, not ever so much talk. Come on, old girl. I think she'll probably benefit from this long run home, to be honest. Cars like a nice long run. And um, yeah, might make a run a bit better. But here's some petroleum. We shall um, go and get some. Ah, there we go, that was, oh, see the display. 51 litres, 63 pounds worth of fuel. Now reset the trip at this point and uh, homeward bound. working relationship and the two cars actually ended up being quite different to one another um, but um, yeah I mean both companies got what they wanted out of it Honda got the legend which was actually built in the UK for a couple of years before they decided that was a really bad idea and um, yeah Rover got the 800 um, which to some wasn't quite the thumping um, Goliath of the SD1, no V8 engine, transverse, no power plant and layout. Um, a bit dainty compared to the SD1. But nonetheless, a very competent executive car and one very well received by the uh, motoring press. There were some compromises forced on the car. Honda insisted on double wishbone front and rear suspension, whereas Rover would have liked more suspension travel for a, a better ride. But this seems okay to me. We're doing 70 miles an hour at the moment, just below 3,000 revs. That's quite relaxing. Got a bit of a steering wheel shimmy going on. But um, yeah, otherwise it feels quite relaxing. And um, a bit of wind noise from my sunroof, of course. Uh, I suspect the vendor had opened that just to try and freshen it a bit because... Uh, let's see if I can get this car to move over for me. Yeah, thank you. Coming up on a recovery truck. You can always put a signal on, they might let you out, they might not. Uh, that one did. But um, yeah, I've entirely forgotten where, where I've got to now. But yeah, the ride is perhaps um, slightly compromised by the double wishbone suspension, but it should make the handling fine. But I'm not going to check it around until I get those tyres sorted out, because I think the tyres are a massive weak spot. The rears are Tigers, made in Yugoslavia. And um, Yugoslavia hasn't existed for quite a long time. So I can't remember if I mentioned, but the history of this car, someone identified in the live stream, but it might be ex-British Aerospace. And it is. The first owner was British Aerospace. British Aerospace owned Rover at the time this car was built, which meant um, its employees got um, favourable um, conditions. Um, so I think this car was picked up very cheaply by its first owner. And um, who work for British Aerospace, 
and uh, he owned the car until his death last year. And um, it's clearly been used fairly sparingly to have only 104,000 miles on the clock. 1989 car, I think, possibly 1990, can't remember. G plate covers both years. But um, yeah, very low ownership. Um, to all intents and purposes, a one owner car, really. Well, I think I'm the fourth on the logbook. But I just love Rovers of this era. I mean, I, I could only have a Montego, well, my, my dad's Montego. First car I drove after passing my test was my dad's Montego. And, um, yeah, it's, um, th this kind of takes me back. It does feel like a bigger Montego, even though the two cars share almost nothing in development terms. Uh, Montego was all BL stroke Austin Rover, whereas this is very much a Honda with some roveriness. We're doing 70, what happens if I put my foot down? Some noise happens. Oh, there we go. Indicated 75. Indicated 80. Allegedly, officer. So, um, yeah, it's no, no turbo diesel talk, but she, she picks up and gets herself going. Just a single carburetor. Which seems, you know, a bit of a misnomer for the time when everything else would have had fuel injection. But, that said, I think some Mercs were still on carburetors. You didn't get an E unless there was fuel injection. Ah, uh, I can smell hot brakes. Uh, that's not good news. Oh no, and we got the motorway junction coming up to the M6. I think I'm going to pull off and just have a quick check of, of the brakes. If anything is seriously hot, then I'm abandoning um, joining the motorway over as far as we can. I'll go and have a look and I'm not taking you with me because pissing about with cameras on the motorway is a major no-no. Yeah, problem is the rear brakes, um, re near side rear, actually smoke coming off it so I'm going to limp very gingerly off the motorway. Oh dear. Yeah, downside of buying a car that hasn't done many miles for a while. Um, I'm Limping back up the M55, I'm going to go back to the vendor, um, I know he works on cars so he, he will have um, the tools necessary to look at this. I've only got a few tools with me, I haven't got a trolley jack. Um, given the state of the sill on that side I do not fancy using the factory jack. Um, so um, yeah, the second collection caper where I have to dismantle a brake before I can drive home. I uh, just wish I'd checked that because he suspected there was a sticky caliper and we got to the um, live reveal location and um, we checked the fronts, absolutely fine, didn't even think to check the rears. So um, there we go, might explain why the pedal has so much travel in it because the sticky piston is using up quite a lot of the travel. But oh, it's not smelling good. Imagine the friction you're generating, it's not good. I would like to be going a bit slower than 50 but not on the motorway. So not quite how we panned it out. Um, we're back at the vendor's house and um, yeah, this, this is properly hot. I can't even undo these with my fingers. They are that hot. So um, maybe I'll just spin them off with a wrench entirely. It's, I'm gonna have to let this cool down. Um, I'm sure we can do something like have a nice cup of tea. Um, there we go. Um, I mean, I was very pleased that these came undone with this tiny little wrench. Uh, which is the point, they're only meant to be talked up to the point where you can undo them with this and so that's evidently good. Oh, oh, oh. Toasty hot. Oh gosh. Because this is what brakes do. Brakes um, turn your forward momentum into heat and um, if they jam they do that rather too well. Why brakes are a bit wasteful really. Right. Put me nuts over there, out the way. And wheel off, oh gosh. Well, we've still got some meat on the pads, I think, or at least one of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've still got meat on the pads, so that's all right. Um, so we'll, we'll um, go for um, the slider boots all right. Yeah, the slider boots are okay, so it's probably the main piston jamming is what's causing our issue. Um, that's slightly interesting. Um, make sure the handbrake is actually releasing as well. 
I might give that a few taps with a love hammer. Uh, but mostly, I'm going to let that cool down for a bit. Right, I'm giving it this caliper a few smacks with a hammer, and the wheel is now turning. I mean, it's still not beautiful, but it is turning better. So I think we're just going to pull it all apart, check everything's free moving. There shouldn't be too much piston exposed because there's a good amount of meat on the pads, and um, we'll see if that'll do to get us home. I was wondering slightly about handbrakes, so let's just go and test that. We'll just go and pull the handbrake on and take it off and see if it is actually releasing cleanly. Okay, handbrake goes on, handbrake goes off. It is in gear, stop it rolling away. And um, how does it feel now? Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. I don't think the um, handbrake mechanism or maybe it is still the sticky piece of piston. Yeah. I think we're gonna I'm gonna try and clean all that and lube that up to make sure that pivot is pivoting properly. Um but um yeah, maybe the handbrake isn't the problem. All the handbrake's doing is operating the piston manually anyway. Hmm. Still quite painful to touch. Oh gosh. Uh, might be a little late for gloves, it'll be alright. I found that, I don't, what's that? Um, oh, well I don't know, we'll, we'll give that a go. We're experimenting with different kinds of grease. We don't have copper grease, but we're getting to the stage where we don't really care because any grease will get me home. I don't care too much about the long term future of this caliper because I suspect it's going to be getting replaced. But there we go. A bit crusty around the piston perhaps. So we'll clean everything up, get rid of all this muck and see what's going on. But the um, the sliders are sliding so that's encouraging. That seems better. Now we just need to um, apply the brakes and see if it releases. Right, just pulled the handbrake on and off. Uh, still somewhat sticky. So is that because the handbrake's not releasing properly? No, that feels more like sticky piston caliper. Problematic. Oh, well there we go, that was a bit of a palaver. We've greased up the caliper with um, all the wrong kinds of grease because we haven't got any red rubber caliper grease, that's really what you want, not red rubber, um, red caliper grease, just generally, hey, oh, cooled down again now, and um, yeah, I think it's probably alright, I'll probably just do a quick um, heat check before we join the M6, um, we've got a short section of the M55, um, but um, yeah, hopefully that's good enough, um, there's a horrible sign of white grease around that caliper, um, which is definitely not what you want, but um, I suspect I might be going through the brakes of this car fairly significantly once I get back, but I've got red um, caliper grease, so at least I've got the right stuff there, wash everything out. Um, one of the problems is you need a wind back tool to push the caliper in, because that's what I'd really like to do, push it back in and exercise it out a few times. We haven't really been able to do that, so... Um, while those children were shouting at me. Um, so yeah, mm, we'll, we'll just see how things go. Oh, the brakes are terrible. It's entirely likely and entirely possible that we've um, boiled the brake fluid. Um, and when you start doing that, you're filling the air system with um, air. So um, less than ideal. Work to be done. As is so often the case, a free car never stays free for long. Right then. We've, ooh, dieseling. Uh, we, we've managed to make it 45 miles so far. Um, just have a quick check of the brakes, shall we? Check the fronts. No heat there. That's okay. Check the back. That's good, nice and cool. 
and I managed to park next to a Rover 400 HHR and uh, that's okay excellent let's go and get some tea how bloody awesome does this car look I have done well probably done even better if I actually get home central locking sadly not functioning oh but I've had a nice cup of tea oh gosh it really does smell damp in here and um, I can now progress home uh, if it'll start it is a bit lumpy it's not a great advert for carburettors well that's 70 miles now so far so unexciting let's hope that continues um, the engine drones on a bit but um, we've been sat at 70 for um, well for about 30 odd miles and um, it ambles along most merrily I don't think it's as slow as you might expect because it's not a particularly heavy car I don't think um, so I mean it's not exactly um, groundbreaking in terms of performance but um, firmly the right side of adequate I'd say quite what it would be like towing a caravan I'm not quite sure but um, I'm not towing a caravan so it's alright Fifth gear, there's a bit of a knack to that. Sometimes it wants to go across into that gate, sometimes not. But we're up to um, 120 miles now. And um, yeah, the brakes are getting worse. Um, it's starting to weave under braking, which um, yeah, suggests that probably all the calipers are knackered, um, which is a bit problematic. So um, we mix in the fact the um, calipers all seem to be knackered, the um, tyres all seem to be knackered, uh, this car is going to be racking up some big bills pretty imminently by the look of it, um, so we may have to review the finances of this one, uh, I mean it is a free car but um, effectively I'm kind of borrowing it and um, I wasn't expecting to have to replace quite so much expensive stuff so we'll, we'll see how that all pans out but I mean certainly still loping along quite merrily got the sunroof closed now um, because it's getting a bit cooler uh, lots of fresh air ventilation that's all very nice I think I can even turn the heater on to still have face level cold which is um, ideal I like that um, don't get to do that in many cars but uh, yeah keep pushing on uh, we're, we're, we've run out of motorway now and dual carriageway indeed so it's a um, single carriageway all the way back now, it's still about an hour and a half from home. <sighs> Not home yet, made it as far as Welshpool. Um, got a serious headache going on and um, yeah, just feel like collapsing to be honest, but we're still probably an hour from home. So that's not good. Um, maybe less than an hour, maybe we're slightly below the hour. Oh, that, that auto focusing really isn't helping. Um, so, yeah, have a quiet sit and um, eventually continue. Sheep. And the good news is we've made it home to a hero's welcome. Um, a fanfare there from the other members of the fleet. Uh, the Mazda's hiding at the top, the fox in the garage. Um, but uh, I love the rear lights, to be honest. Fine looking car. But, um, yeah, burr, 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 burr. we made it home. Um, about 180 miles in total. I slightly underestimated it. Um, so well, I'll go and show you the dash. Um, illuminated. There you go, isn't that lovely? I wonder if we've got any interior lights. No, nope, apparently not. No interior lights. Uh, right then, I'm going to go and um, collapse. Uh, not going to best run back. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's that. So, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you 
in a future video with more about this car and all the other cars. Farewell.